This is the banana spider. They're huge, they're venomous, but not so bad when you're just seeing them through your screen. But what if I told you that these spiders have been showing up with no warning all over the world, and one could even be in your house right now? Have you ever heard the legend of the banana spider? The story goes that large, aggressive spiders will show up in shipments of tropical fruit and attack unsuspecting victims with a deadly bite. This is usually the part where we say, don't worry, this is totally fake. Except the thing is, it's not. Not entirely, anyway. Tonight, we're going to break down this story and find the real-life banana spider to show you why everything you think you know about this animal is wrong. My name is Harrison, and this is Evan. We're twin brothers on a mission to help you become an insider in the natural world. And a key part of that endeavor is clearing up the myths that surround our planet's most misunderstood creatures. Many of the animals that live in the cloud forests of the Ecuadorian Andes can only be found here. But our target tonight is different, as the banana spider is infamous for showing up in places that it shouldn't, far away from its home. We want to track down the spider that gave rise to this legend and show you what they're really like in the wild, because the facts make these animals far less scary and a whole lot more interesting. To do this though, we need to find one, but luckily for us, we won't need to go far. We started our search right around our lodge, and after exploring in the rich vegetation for only a few minutes, to my surprise, I spotted a large spider sitting in a nearby plant. Oh dude! Big Coopianius. Oh. All right. Hello. Wow, she's big. Uh, what do we reckon? Do I just catch her or put her in a container first? She might run without the container, but you could try they're, and just get fast. a hand on her. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will. May as well use the container just to be safe. Yeah, why not? All right, sweetheart. I'm actually gonna put. <laughs> she's scratching herself. What a sweetheart. Oh. 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 Come here, you. That's it. I think I got her. Nice. Nice! All right. This is what we wanted to see. This is a red-thighed bromeliad spider. And actually, there's quite an interesting story to this arachnid. This is a spider that is very often mistaken for another species, the Brazilian wandering spider. But in fact, this species belongs to a completely different family of spiders, the bromeliad spiders, or the banana spiders, and we actually would like to take a look at her. There she goes. Just like that, on my hand, because when most people encounter this animal, they pretty much kill it on sight. Spiders are an object of fear around the world, and especially here in South America, where there are deadly spiders that can cause considerable damage to a human. But what we want to prove is that you don't need to fear these animals as long as you give them respect. Now, this is a species that does occur in areas that humans use quite frequently. We see them all around our lodge. We see them all over the cattle pastures. So for someone that sees this animal and mistakes it for the considerably more deadly wandering spider, it elicits a lot of fear. But as you can see, this is not an animal you need to be afraid of at all. She's just sitting on Harrison's hand, giving him no issue whatsoever. A bite from this animal would be no problem at all. It would be no more dangerous to us than a bee sting. And what we really want to get across is that if we're willing to push past our fear of these animals and learn more about them, they're so fascinating. There's so much more we can learn about their life stories. And once you do that, they're really quite interesting. Now let's start with the obvious question, which is what actually is a banana spider? Right, because in the US, you can ask 10 different people from 10 different states what a banana spider is, and they could very well all point to 10 different species of spiders. The only thing they seem to agree on, though, is that they're deadly and aggressive. Exactly. Now, where the story and the name banana spider actually originates is with bromeliad spiders like the one we found tonight, because they have a kind of unfortunate habit of making a home in banana plants or other fruit trees on farms and plantations. So when humans go to harvest 
harvest those fruits, the spiders get caught up in the shipments and sent to supermarkets and even in people's houses all over the world. But this is not something they're doing on purpose. It's just that these plants are their natural habitat. Right, so these spiders are living in broadleafed plants like bromeliads and especially banana plants because they're really a perfect home for spiders like this. They can hide from predators, there's lots of space for them to hunt, so it's an ideal habitat for them, except for when they're living in a place where the fruit is constantly being collected by people and they end up getting shipped off to places that they do not want to be. It's important to point out that this is an incredibly rare occurrence to begin with, much less common than the news articles about it might make you think. And even when it does happen, in the overwhelming majority of cases, it's happening with spiders that aren't dangerous to people at all. Yeah, it's gonna be things like bromeliad spiders or huntsman spiders, things that look really imposing but aren't anything harmful to people. And while it's technically possible for a dangerously venomous wandering spider to end up in a banana shipment like that, there are only a tiny handful of cases where that's ever been recorded, and it's never led to a bite that we've ever heard of. But the bottom line is that most often when this happens, it's not with spiders that are dangerous to people, and it's so rare to happen in the first place that this is really something you don't have to worry about at all. Now, I will admit that the bromeliad spider we found tonight is pretty scary looking, even if you know it can't hurt you. So what we want to do now is take a look at some of their creepiest features and break them down a little bit so you understand what their purpose is. Because when you understand why these animals have the features that they have, they become a lot less intimidating. These spiders have an incredible way of interacting with their world. They do have some pretty impressive eyes, but that is actually not their most acute sensory organ. Their two front legs are covered in extremely sensitive hairs that they actually use to sense vibrations in the environment, and they do this incredibly effectively. They can feel the most minute vibrations caused by any prey species, like a small arthropod, a fly, or a cockroach, or even something as large as a small amphibian. Any sort of tree frog or little rain frog would be a potential prey item for this animal. And what they'll do is they'll sit on a leaf or move across the forest floor using all of those hairs to sense the vibrations that animals give off as they move through the environment. And that is actually what they're honing in on while they're hunting to get close enough to their prey to inject the venom that they do have. And though it wouldn't be harmful for me, for a small invertebrate, that is a pretty potent cocktail that they can take down prey with no problem at all. Now, here's the really fascinating thing about these spiders. On top of using those sensitive front legs for hunting, they can actually communicate with other individuals using their ability to sense vibrations. When the female is ready to mate, what she'll do is set out a little strand of web and vibrate it. And any males that are around will be able to sense that vibration using those extra sensitive hairs and locate the female even in complete pitch darkness. They're able to find themselves that way, initiate a mating interaction, and propagate their species, all using those incredible front legs. It's a really fascinating adaptation that these spiders have, and it's something you would never be able to learn about if your first reaction to seeing this animal would be to run the other way or just squish it. If we aren't willing to get over our fear, there's no way we're going to be able to learn about the fascinating life stories that these animals have. But that's really what we want to do. We want to show that there's no reason to fear these spiders, even though they may look like some of the more imposing species out here in the cloud forest. They're just fascinating little creatures that, in the words of our good friend Spencer, they're just trying to make their way in the universe. And that's exactly what we're going to let this little individual do. The whole point of handling this species is to prove that they are completely inoffensive and not dangerous to humans at all, and also encourage you that if you have a fear or even just a reservation about spiders, to give them a second chance and another look. Because when we do, there's so much more to learn and so much more to appreciate that makes spending time in the outdoors far more enriching. And in fact, this is probably one of the spiders that I was hoping to see most and share because these animals are absolutely unlike anything that we get to work with at home. So the fact that we are getting to see bromeliad spiders like this in the wild is an incredible experience for both of us. Definitely. There are a ton more insane invertebrates out here and we want to find as many as we can to highlight just how many incredible species exist here in the cloud forest. And in fact, 
there is another spider that we keep alluding to that we would really like to see out here. So we'll get this bromeliad spider back on our way and see if we can catch up with another one of the incredible spiders out here in this environment. All right, we are gonna get this little bromeliad spider back. Where was she, bro? Was she she just... was right in these leaves. Perfect. Right about there. All right. She's actually been very calm. I wonder if we'll get to see a little bit of that speed that these guys are known for. No, she's just gonna be nice and gentle, which is just fine as well. As you are, sweetheart. Perfect, right back on her leaf. If nothing else, I think what this encounter proves is that the banana spider is not something you need to worry about. After all, it's extremely rare for these spiders to appear in shipments of fruit in the first place, and even in the unlikely event that you actually did find one in your bananas, they're not aggressive or dangerous to people at all. Would it still be a little freaky? Sure. But just remember that these arachnids aren't out to get you, and they definitely aren't traveling thousands of miles away from their home to a place where they will almost certainly die on purpose. We hope that by learning a bit about these guys and what their lives are really like, you've taken away some appreciation for this misunderstood species, which is one of our main goals in sharing the incredible life stories of the cloud forest. And with all the insane wildlife that exists here, believe me when I tell you, we are just getting started. Now, we've already hinted that we have another major arachnid target in this region, one which is among the world's most infamous and deadliest spiders, the Brazilian Wandering Spider. They will be the focus of an upcoming video, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that adventure and much more in the future. But if you're still not sure about spiders yet, check out this video where we track down a tarantula so beautiful, gentle, and unique that it might just cure your arachnophobia forever. And with that, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one.